Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus, Holy Mary. Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see every one of you here. It's, uh, it's a nice turnout for a Saturday, and it uh, uh, brings a lot of joy to a priest and a deacon's heart to see uh, more people than normal here. And so today, this Mass is an opportunity to start the day in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the power of the Holy Eucharist, opening up our hearts to receive more to receive the unimaginable, to receive the, the, the things that we never thought were possible through faith. So, brothers and sisters, this is going to be an amazing weekend. So be open to whatever God wants to do in your life. And as we enter into this holy mass, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare our hearts to receive Him. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Set aside, O Lord, the bond of sentence written for us by the law of sin, which in the Paschal mystery you canceled through the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is, Lord, let your mercy be upon us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be upon us. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-string lyre, chant his praises. Amen. 
Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be upon us as we place our trust in you. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ is risen, who made all things. He has shown mercy on all people. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. When it was evening, the disciples of Jesus went down to the sea, embarked in a boat, and it went across the sea to Capernaum. It had already grown dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea was stirred up because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea, coming near the boat, and they began to be afraid. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. They wanted to take him into the boat, but the boat immediately arrived at the shore in which they were heading. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. So as we continue to journey through the readings of the book of Acts, we continue to learn about the initial or the primitive church, the church of the first, the first century, the beginning of church history. It's important to highlight for those who have not heard this, that the Acts of the Apostles are not just post-resurrection stories. They're not just stories of what happened to the disciples after the resurrection of the Christ, but also, and more specifically, they are stories about what happens after Pentecost, after the reception of the Holy Spirit. Why am I mentioning that? It's because sometimes in our Christian faith, we can think that uh, if we just believe in the resurrection if we just believe in Christ, uh, that's going to be enough in this world. But the reality is that we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit just as much as the disciples and the apostles did. If we don't have the Holy Spirit, we will not be able to fulfill the Christian life. We will not be able to be the joyful, strong, faithful servants of the Lord that we're called to be. We need the Holy Spirit. And, and there's so many examples to back that up with Scripture, but I just wanted to say that as an introduction. Now, in the Acts of the Apostles chapter 6 that we just read, there is a dispute, there, there's a complaining uh, or a complaint uh, against the Hebrews because of a ministry that's rejected, the ministry to the widows. And so the 12, the, the apostles called together the community of disciples and said, 
It is not right for us to neglect the Word of God to serve at table. So this is an issue here. Uh, sometimes uh, when, when we're in ministry, we realize that we don't have enough time to do it all. Uh, for example, I, I as a priest, I, I cannot do everything. And so I need my coworkers, I need my deacons, I need uh, ministers that are lay people to help us in the mission. For example, I couldn't be, uh, one of the things I do the least as a priest uh, is like feed the poor or be out there on the streets preaching um, or um, be out there and serving uh, uh, a meal to, to the homeless, uh, stuff like that. That's some of those things that, are, that I do the least. It's, and it's not because it matters less, but it's more because I have other things that are, are, that are more um, directly connected to my ministry. For example, saying a mass or uh, preaching from the pulpit will be uh, more important for, for my particular role. And all of us have particular roles that the Lord has called us to do. We all have different roles or responsibilities, different callings, different vocations. And within that vocation are, are found different missions, different things that we have to do. And so sometimes uh, you'll see me say no. You'll, you'll hear me say no. And no, as they say, is a love word, right? Sometimes uh, it doesn't sound very nice, but sometimes I have to say no. I have to say no to this. I have to say no to that in order to fulfill my mission. Like I cannot be, uh, for example, if anybody has uh, ever thought, oh, maybe I want to be like a, a soccer player so that through soccer I can glorify God. Every time I score, I can glorify God and I can evangelize on media and I can uh, do that. Well, th th if I wanted to do that, that's, that would be a nice thought, but that is not my vocation, right? Uh, the, the, I, I am limited to other things that are more important for me as a priest. And so the, in the initial church, they had to kind of figure this question out. And this passage helps us understand the theology of uh, deacons, how, how we have deacons now uh, in the church from the very beginning of the church. And it says here that they chose, they, they proposed some, some people to the community. Now this is important to highlight uh, that as we discern our vocation, as we call forth those to serve, the whole community comes together. The whole community comes together, and the whole community has to analyze and pray that we have to see whether these men are worthy, these servants are worthy. And so they do. Brothers, select from among yourselves seven reputable men, filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. So that's one of the requirements. If you want to serve God, you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Hmm. So if you're here at this retreat this weekend, this is a perfect opportunity for you because you are given the, the chance to receive more of the Holy Spirit so that if you want to serve God through the power of the Holy Spirit, you can go forth and serve the Lord. When the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is wisdom. And then we get appointed. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So again, an element of community, community approval, community discernment. What was the last time you were engaged in a community discernment? I wonder. I've only been here a year and a half at the center. And what was the last time you discerned something together with your ministry team, with your family, with the church in general? Hmm, hopefully we do that more. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. So this is interesting. Again, we have an element of community. We have a strong element of prayer. And, and then uh, the element of the Holy Spirit all mixed in in this. So in order for us to serve the Lord, we have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit more than ever. And then it finishes this reading by saying, The word of God continued to spread, and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a great number of priests were coming obedient to the faith. More Jewish priests were coming obedient to the faith. Maybe other priests from other religions. It doesn't specify in this particular case. But, but it's important to highlight again, 
when we all fulfill our roles, when we all fulfill our tasks, the faith grows and the number of disciples increases. So whenever I as a priest do less of your job, the, the, the number of, of the faithful increases. And whenever you as a lay people do, try to do less things that I'm supposed to do, then the number of faithful increases. That's why we need each other. As a family, we need each other. I can't do it all, and you can't do it all. There's things that only I can do. There's a very few number of those. And there's, things, there's lots of things that you should do instead of me. And when we have that balance and we have each other in community, then just organically people will come to the faith. So if you see a church, a community of believers, where there's not a lot of converts, there's not a lot of growth, there's not a lot of things happening, something's wrong. Something's wrong. And it could be that maybe we're doing roles that we shouldn't be doing. Maybe we're trying to accomplish things that God never even asked us to do. So we have to discern it. We have to discern what is God asking me to do. Is this particular thing something God wants me to do? Or is this something that I'm doing because I want to stand out or I want to do more or I want to serve the Lord? And it might be a good intention, but it might not be God's will. Just because it's a good intention, it doesn't mean it glorifies God and it doesn't mean it's God's will. So we always have to discern, just like the apostles got together and prayed, and they discern who is going to serve at the, at the word and who's going to serve at a table. All those things we have to do. We have to pray and figure out where we should be. So after these retreats, after this experience this weekend, I invite you to pray, to ask the Lord, Lord, where do you want me to serve? Do you want me to join the catechist? Do you want me to join uh, the women's ministry? Do you want me to join the faith in the fire ministry? Do you want me to join the worship ministry? Do you want me to join the altar ministry? Do you want me to join the lecture ministry? Do you, and I could go on and on. The list is enormous. There's so many things that we need at the church. And so pray. If you're not doing anything, then you're not doing anything. And you know, we have a saying in Spanish, if you don't serve uh, for anything, like if you don't serve in anything, then you are basically serf, serfless. But in the translation in English is if, if you don't serve in anything, then you're worthless. <laughs> so uh, obviously as a child of God, you're always worthy and you're always loved. But if you don't serve in any capacity, then are you really a disciple? Are you really an apostle for Christ? Do you really have faith? Because faith without works is dead. So, brothers and sisters, let us stand and pray to the Lord. <clears throat> For all civic authorities and leaders, may God empower them to implement good laws, especially in consideration for the life of the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those marginalized in our society, especially the poor and the unborn. May God's presence at their side uphold and strengthen them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the community gathered here today, may we be strengthened by the prayers we offer and by the Eucharist in which we partake. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, May God welcome them into his eternal banquet in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you are praying. And we pray for all of the activities that are happening here at the center this weekend, that the power of the Holy Spirit would come down upon us, that we be anointed anew and filled with the grace and power of God. We pray to the Lord. And we offer this Mass for the eternal repose of Malak Malachi or Malachi Martinez. Let us pray to the Lord. Most merciful Father, we thank you and we praise you 
we surrender our lives to you and ask you to do all things for us as we recognize our weakness and our smallness. Release the power of your love in our lives to change us and to change the world. Fill us with your love and allow us to love those around us with your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In this moment of the Mass, it's what we call the offertory. This part of the Mass is a transitioning into the liturgy of the Eucharist. In this point of the Mass, usually the servers or the priest or deacon is preparing the altar, they're preparing the gifts, they're bringing forth the bread and the wine, and they're preparing them to be consecrated. At this point of the Mass, it's, it's always an invitation for us to think about what do I want to give to God today? What thoughts, what works, what projects, what dreams, what part of my life do I want to recommit to God and put, in, put on the altar? Because it's not just about giving Him physical things like the money that we usually bring forward or the gifts to be consecrated, but this is also an invitation for us to bring our lives to Him again, to say, Lord, here I am. Here's my heart. I place my life at Your feet. I place my life on the altar so that I would be a pleasing sacrifice to You. Amen? Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. You will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. You will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you. Watch me, Lord, from iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Sanctify graciously these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of the spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown up and open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has arisen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Sana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are 
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the to fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. <clears throat> Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be, we may be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we pray, from every evil, Lord. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace of the Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth and charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in this day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who wander throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom